Deacon Sakari. We back at it like a crack at it. They done let them bruise in the dough. In this wicked industry. To shine the light. Uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh, they done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. Uh, he bruised. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look, Joe Biden need to free dark low. The hell is wrong with dude? No Alamolek, but I got perfect vision in the dark. I'm a lexicon, I'm a megalodon, all my verses ripping them apart. Mosaic law with the church is missing, it's the worst religion from the start. In my soul where the word is written, out of circumcision, not a heart. I'm rocking my fringes, I'm in Seattle, rocking like Hendrix. No industry gimmicks, you rappers to finish, I'm kicking the door off the hinges. Throwing stones like you sinless till you get the finish, you should have repented in minute. This truth is endless, they loving the image. I know what happened to Kim, what happened to Kim. I keep my pencil on point, no sharpener. Used to weigh pounds of troll, I lay down the flow like carpenters. She causing division in the sisterhood. I'm marking on. I'm preparing the way for the harvester. I'm a harbinger. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief Ephraim, he can vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Y'all ready? Shout out to my brother Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt. I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. I see a lot of haters. I do it will come with it. Rap game full of evil and sin. And I don't want none of it. They bite my style. They just want to take it and run with it. Sakari Varsity Online Academy specializing in Hebrew apologetics. Come learn how to defend the gospel. Email Sakari Seattle at gmail.com. Limited registration. Well, you one hit one delicious. You can call me the deacon. But just put the strong right in front of it. World of sin, sedition of men. I know the most high is my ruler. My neighborhood full of drug deals, blood spills from fire and rugas. These niggas getting crazy. I seen them do a drive by in the Uber. I tell them come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of Lion of Judah. But some people think we finally back on, finally back on. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. I know a lot of y'all been waiting. You better, a lot of people on back order. We still got some, though. Put your order in before it's too late. I'm going to start having them regularly, Lord willing. But get it in. Let's go. Hit me up. DM. Even your head wraps. Stay dipped. Stay brew dripping. All right. DeaconSakari.com. All right, y'all. Go to czyn.network czyn.network we done with patreon no more patreon czyn.network you're gonna get videos too hot for youtube or early releases so go sign up promo code deacon sakari promo code deacon sakari promo code deacon sakari not only do you get deacon sakari's content you get guerrilla hebrew content hasad content other camps putting their content on this platform. We need our own app, so sign up using promo code Deacon Sakari. C Z Y N dot network. It's our own app, our own platform. The white man can no longer subvert or hide or try to censor this truth. So sign up and get this heat. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari, CZY. Introducing Super Thanks. YouTube has now added a feature where you can donate if you missed a live show by just clicking the heart button with the thanks on it. It'll be on every video. It'll highlight your comment to bring more attention to your statement. So if it's on your heart, super thanks. Shalom. Popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils We be in the trenches, needles under benches We be giving them the gospel I keep 12 Sakari members with me We be moving like apostles True. Some sisters is dead traps, hair wraps But you still a thought though The church don't even know the truth They can even tell you you an Israelite Arabs selling you all the switches And the malt liquor or the Ishmaelite You 
life. You show a nigga slave ships in the Bible, still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then a the nigga gotta find out what them missiles like. All right, y'all. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. Lord in Christ. Let me say something real quick. Oh, that's easy. Uh, so first and foremost, y'all, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to you, Howard. And we do so by Shima Mashiach Shai. Let's get right into it, y'all. I've been traveling a little under the weather, but the ministry must go on. The ministry must go on. Pray for my health. I believe it was just a common cold, but damn it, it don't feel good. Uh, <clears throat> so remember I told you guys that most of my street ministry goes on CZYN. Make sure you use promo code Deacon Sakari. CZYN.network and make sure you use promo code Deacon Sakari to get all this heat that either doesn't see YouTube or rarely sees YouTube. So I just wanted to put that link out there. Moderators, make sure you post the link in the chat to the CZYN.network using promo code Deacon Sakari so that y'all <clears throat> can get exclusive footage too high for YouTube. And just support the brothers that are that are laboring for the faith. All praises while you guys sit on your couch with your lamb and your and your unleavened bread and get fed. But either way, I love street prophets, I love internet prophets, and I love couch prophets. Because don't feel bad. If you feel convicted, that's because you're supposed to be on the highways. But if you don't feel convicted, then you understand that everybody ain't meant for the streets. <clears throat> so this is an encounter from a few months ago before it warmed up. As you can see, I got my electric heating coat. I got my electric heating coat on and... Uh, I'm nice and bundled up, got my gloves. I believe that's probably cam chamomile tea. But let's play some of this though, because I wanna give a shout out to the Christians who come to battle and then you don't turn a blind eye to the scripture and you try to listen instead of regurgitating the Christian rhetoric from your white supremacist cult. So I do want to give this brother a uh, a shout out and a salute and a salute um, that he started getting it. He started listening towards the end, but he came up like every other Christian <clears throat> thinking they know something, but they're wise to do evil only. So let's take a look. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? Huh? What's up, man? You a Christian? Yes, sir. What's going on, man? What's your nationality, brother? Uh, man, I'm black, white, native. Black, white, native? What is black? How's black and ethnicity? Well, my parent, my dad's African American. Okay, so you're African American. So you're from two continents. Yes. What's part of Africa? What country are you from in Africa? I don't know. I you don't know? Too, yeah. Why are we the only people who don't know where we come from? Good question. Because the Bible said we would lose our identity and nationality. Yep. That's where the real Israelites. You know well, that? I said that. Identity is in Christ. Right? Your identity is in Christ? Yeah. So, but don't you have... You see that? My identity is in Christ. Only a stupid-ass black person would say something like that. Not even black person. I'm sorry. Black Christian. Only a silly black... Christian will say something that's stupid. 
my identity is in Christ. I don't have an ethnicity. I don't have a race. Yet, the Bible says the great Christians believe that those Greeks in the New Testament are actual Greeks. It says the Greeks that believe. Or you guys think the Ethiopian eunuch is an actual Hamite. Okay, what about Ruth the Moabite? What about Rahab the uh, Canaanite? What about the Ethiopian eunuch? What about the Greeks? So Christianity is the only religion where if when black people join it, they further destroy the identity, tarnish and dismantle racial, any racial empowerment and ethnic pride that so-called black people should have. It's disgusting. My identity, we're going to teach these stupid black blacks that their identity is in Christ. So they can be further lost and furthermore a child of hell than when it, before they came in to the church. I say this all the time. The Filipino Christians got their flag and their race and their culture. Samoan Christians, Ethiopian Christians, Russian Christians, Eastern, Eastern Orthodoxy, you name it. Every other race gets to be a Christian and have their flag and culture and ethnic pride, except for this dumbass black. <sighs> I have yet to hear any other race when I say, what's your nationality? Tell me their identities in Christ. I have yet to hear it. Right, the Coptic Christians, which are the Egyptians, for surely. I have Samoan Christians, Filipino Christians, yeah. and yeah, That's okay. all nationalities. Dude. When we get to heaven, you're gonna see multitudes of people, all different kind of nations. What are their roles gonna be, though? So, what so he said, when you get to heaven, you're gonna see many different races, right? But I thought that, so in heaven, everybody, Christians believe everybody who makes it to heaven. Uh, are going to be in Christ. You can't make it to heaven if you're not in Christ. And you have no identity if you're not in Christ. So why can we see in the Bible, in eschatological scriptures, kingdom connotative chapters, we still see races? For example, right? Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen here. All right, so great chapter. This is a great chapter to prove racial identity in the Bible, in the kingdom rather. In Zechariah 14 and 16, it says, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. This hasn't happened. Nobody can say this happened. The Lord of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The whole world keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, which the Christians say are, is done away. And it shall be that whosoever come up of all the families of the earth, plural, there's different families in the earth, meaning different races, different ethnicities, different nationalities. They got to go up to worship the Lord. If not, there will be no rain. They're going to be a famine on the land. And if the family of Egypt go not up, they're going to get smitten. So we see a distinction between ethnicities and we see identities that are not Christian or whatever in the kingdom. Then the Canaanite won't even get to enter the temple in the kingdom. That's verse 21. And there shall no more the Canaanite and be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Very good scripture to prove in the kingdom there will be a distinction between ethnicity and races. So this whole identity in Christ BS, is there even in the Bible? Can somebody find me a Bible verse that says the identity in Christ? To worship the Father? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, asked, so, I, so I asked him, what will everybody's role be in the in the kingdom of heaven? You're gonna see multitude of people, all different kind of nations. What are their roles together. gonna be though? To worship the Father. To so worship the Father? Yes. Give me Revelation 2 and 26. Let me show you what's gonna be happening in heaven according to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, this is a red letter. You're a Christian, right? Yes. And Christianity teaches to love all people, right? That's right. So you love all people? Yes. You love Hitler? Sure. Do you love Hitler? I should. I should. I should. I should. Girl, it's a process. <laughs> that nigga said, I should love him. It's, I'm still going through growth and, and growth, and it's a process. <clears throat> I'm still going through growth, and it's a process. So let me rewind that a little bit. You love Hitler? I should. Do you love Hitler? Yeah, that's a growth in process. It's a growth in process. Yeah, it's a progress. It's a progress. <laughs> Give me okay. Revelation well, well, 2. You said you, you got to die daily, man. There's you got to die daily, huh? Die. Give me Revelation 2 and 26. Let's look at the words of Christ. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Yeah. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Do you have to have works according to Jesus Christ? Well, I think the, the works, are, the works is, comes out of what's working within you. You know what I mean? Okay. But you have to have works? Sure, so it's a works-based salvation? No, sir. So it's can, not just strictly by works that we work our way into heaven. I don't believe that. So can being a homosexual keep you from heaven? I think that if you come to Jesus as a homosexual, you know, and call on him, you can be saved and he can deliver you from all, you know, the acts. And, and what do you have to do to make it to heaven? Well, you need to believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Hitler, Hitler believed in Jesus Christ. Well, that was kind of an off belief, though, man. He, you know, he believed that Jesus but then all this other stuff, it doesn't add up. It doesn't measure mm -hmm. to what the... Uh, oh, what the so fruit so is. he has to have the fruits. Yeah, the fruits. So the he fruit. has to have works. Yeah, there should be, there should be okay. some evidence that... So give know, me Revelation follow. 2 and 26. Don't drop... And that's a good point, too. Because the Christian church, they're always talking about uh, it's not a works-based salvation. That you just believe in Christ. And then... So my question to the Christians... Can bad works keep you from heaven? And they would say yes. So that means good works can get you to heaven. Either way, it's a works-based salvation or a works-based damnation. It's a works-based salvation or it's a works-based damnation. Okay, go back to Revelation 2 and 26. I don't need whatever he's asking. Go ahead. And keep my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. So when you keep his works over until the end, you get power over the nations. Do you want power over other people? What people are you going to have power over? What people is the church going to have power over? I thought everybody would be equal in the kingdom of heaven. Well, I mean, we're definitely, it says that... Uh, you know, we're battling against these, these powers and principalities and things. So in heaven, when you get power over the other people, what are you going to do to them? Are you going to beat the hell out of them? Well, I don't think that's... that's okay, so I read think. this. <laughs> such great red letters. I mean, such great words of Christ that we're going to get an iron rod to beat the hell out of people. You ask a Christian, do they want that promise from Jesus Christ? And they all say no especially white Christians, because they already have power over the other nations. They don't need salvation. They don't need that promise from Christ, period. People, what are you going to do to them? Are you going to beat the hell out of them? Well, I don't think that's... <laughs> okay, so read this. And he shall... Uh, verse 27. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron. When you get power over the nations, you're going to rule them with the iron rod. What are you going to do with that iron rod? Practice like Donatello with it? Well, let's read it. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into sh to shivers. Read it slow. Read that slow. Right As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. So he said, you're going to have power over other nations. You're going to rule those other nations with an iron rod and break them into pieces like breaking pottery. Is this what the Christians teach? Because Jesus is saying that. Look at that's red letter. 
And he highlighted it for some reason. Because it's a focal point of the gospel. Well, there you go. Put a one in the chat if you want an iron rod to beat the hell out of those who oppressed you. If you want that promise of Christ. Put a two in the chat if, you know, you don't want that promise of Christ. Put a one if you want that promise of Christ. Put a two if you don't want that promise of Christ. <clears throat> Usually there's a lot more Christians up in here. Okay. We must not have any Christians in here today. It's all good though. Christians, I see you. Like Mano said, like Mano said, hi haters, hi haters, you see me, hi haters. Christians don't want the promises of Christ. This is why Romans 9 and 4 says, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the services of God and the promises. We want the promises. We need the promises. It's a focal point of the gospel. Jesus Christ is telling us that he has a chosen people. Give me first Peter two and nine in the ESV. Now, I got a question yeah, one, for you. I, I got you. Go. Who are God's chosen people according to the Bible? Well, originally. Originally? You know, well, I'm saying before before Christ came, mm -hmm. it was Israel. But after that, then it says that uh, we as, uh, as Christians have been grafted into the vine. Uh, Abad, the water king for the super chat donation. Greatly appreciate you, my dear beloved brother. Why do Christians, where in the Bible does it say, Israelites were God's people before Christ came, but now after Christ came, they're not God's people anymore. <clears throat> That's the verse I'm looking for. Before Christ, they were the people, and after Christ, they're not the people because God changed his mind. With all the divine providence that God has and the foreknowledge and the predestination, uh, he changed his mind. Somebody got to make it make sense. One of you Christians in this chat, leave, leave, a, leave a scripture, leave a scriptura. Christians been grafted into the vine you know, through believing and trusting in Christ. Uh, you know, and then, you know, we. And, and, ain't it weird? I know I keep stopping, but this is important, everybody. Ain't it weird that they teach God is not dealing with the Israelites anymore? They're not his chosen people anymore. Yet, heathen Gentiles have to be grafted into the vine, which is Israel. Can we make that make sense? Can we really make that make sense? God is done dealing with Israel, but you have to be grafted into Israel. Huh? Please help me. We become then, you know, God's chosen people. Okay. You know, through, through so Christ. ethnic Jewish children, you don't stand with the Jewish community. Why shouldn't I stand with the Jewish community? I think that we So you do stand them. with the Jewish community? We should, yeah, but Do you the know they time, teach that Jesus Christ is in hell boiling and hot shit? Which ain't which ain't true, King. Do you want to stand with the people who don't believe in the New Testament? Well, no, I don't want to stand They're with They're enemies that. of the gospel. Right, yeah, I'm not standing with that. Dang. His brother's getting it. <clears throat> See, the whole world stands behind the small hat community. The whole world stands behind the small hat community. And the whole world doesn't even know what's in the Tao move. Most of the world is Christian, right? I want to explain this very simply. 
I want to simplify this. The whole world stands behind the small hat community and they don't know. And, and most of the world is Christians. Yet they don't know that they believe that the savior of most of the world is boiling in hot shit, according to their authoritative literature. <clears throat> according to Jewish authoritative literature, the savior and king and God of most of the world is boiling in hot shit. But they have so much of control over the whole world that people don't want to get canceled so they will still stand by the small hat community the small hat community teaches oral circumcision the small hat community teaches that non-israelites that gentiles the goy you can rob them you can kill them you can defraud them yet the whole world still stands by that community <clears throat> that's what type of control they have. And the Bible says in Job 9 and 24 that the wicked would rule the earth. So who are the wicked? It literally, literally says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. It literally says, when the wicked rule, the people mourn. Meaning there's going to be chaos, anarchy. Uh, you guys get the picture. But he, he gets it, though. He said, no, nah, I don't understand with a people like that. <clears throat> You're enemies that. of the gospel. Right, yeah, I'm not saying like that. I'm just saying that I'm I'm opening myself up to, to be a wrestler, to, to share and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Savior, and that I'll stand with them, you know, tell them, hey, you know, this is available for you just as much as it is for me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That's, okay. what I'm, that's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's see in the New Testament. So the, would you say that the Christian church is many races and many nations? Oh, we're, we're well, we're one we're one one race under god there's one race when when it comes to christians you know we're it's it's one one group of people the christian but it's many nations many nations okay yeah, many so nations. so let's see what the first peter 2 and 9 i just want to show you that the christian church lied and tried to say that the jew the jews are not god's chosen people anymore we are the real jews those imposters yeah. in israel yeah. those are them that say they're jews <laughs> i might have to be careful with that. And this is why 95% of my street teachings are on CZYN.network on our own platform. Because when I start talking like this, YouTube gets mad. So I got to do live edits. I got to do live edits. <clears throat> and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. we've been grafted in but no we're the real ethnic blacks hispanics and native americans we're the real ethnic israelites we're the ones who crucified jesus so that salvation could come to our people Ooh, i bet christians get mad when i say that that we crucified jesus so that salvation could come to our people stupid ass christians they think that we crucified jesus because we rejected him. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 my dog. Let's go to the Bible real quick. <clears throat> Did y'all know that we crucified our Lord because we knew we had, the Bible says he had to die to save our nation? Yes. He would say, you guys are Pharisees. You guys are Pharisees. Okay, well, the Pharisees believed in the Messiah. Most of them. Most of them, but some were wicked because the Lord did rebuke them. But most of them believed in the Messiah. And then they had a council so that they could put him to death to save our nation. Because that's what the Old Testament prophecy says. Daniel 9, that he would die, but not for himself. Isaiah 53, that he would die for the sins of our people. <clears throat> uh, 
Psalms 22, that would pierce his hands and feet. Zechariah 19. I'm sorry, Zechariah 12 or 9. They will look, we will look upon him whom we have pierced. You understand? Mm, boy, them Christians. How could you ever say something like that? That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. That's an inside joke. You had to be in the truth for about 16 years to know what video that's from. That's absolutely horrible. <clears throat> that was what I think that was. The <laughs> if Assad is in here, I think that was that Jewish dude who ran up on ISUPK or GMS back in like 2007. Man, they they was they was saying they were scolding that that Jewish man. I mean, scolding him. They were praising the guy. I can't say his name, but they were praising the guy that destroyed the small hats and saying how wonderful he was and he should have finished the job. And that white dude, that white Jewish man, was like, hey, he was crying. I mean, face full of tears. That's absolutely horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Why would you say something like that? Somebody says sound. What do you mean sound? Turn your phone up, clown. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, Benaya, the water king. Yahal Bashim Yahashah Brakata. Greatly appreciate you, brother, for the super chat donation. Listen, brothers and sisters, I'll just be joking. Don't get all mushy. You know, when you come on here, you know, just... It's okay. Hold on. Hello? I'm live right now. Yeah, why? Well, what's up? All right, I'll hit you back. Shalom. <clears throat> I think he was correcting the typo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that was that General uh Mayak? I think that was General Mayak. <laughs> Zion, I'm just joking with you, brother. <laughs> you know me, I'm a rapper, so everything has to rhyme. And so when you said sound, I said, well, turn your phone up, clown. You understand? <clears throat> so let me just say this, because I made a statement. And I want to prove it with the Bible. I told that brother that we were the ones who crucified Jesus so that he could, Jesus could bring salvation to our nation. This is in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 47. And it reads, Then gather the chief priests. <laughs> See, Dr. Brown, he's so stupid. He tried to say that a chief priest is a high priest. There's only one high priest. There's multiple chief priests. Because he's a clown from uptown, Dr. Brown. And Pharisees, and the Pharisees a council. So they had the chief priests and the Pharisees had a council. There was one high priest there. Look at this. And Caiaphas being the high priest. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, where are we at? Verse 48. So they're saying, look, if we leave him alone, all men will believe on him. See that? So when these stupid Christians try to say, Oh, all of Israel rejected him. They didn't they didn't want him. No. They're saying all men will believe on him if we if we don't do something about this. Everybody's believing this guy that he's the Messiah of the Davidic line. Now look what they say though. And if everybody believes on him and we start saying he's the king and the Messiah, like they did in John chapter 6. They tried to crown him. Then they say, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Because why? The Romans will be like, oh, they're trying to set up somebody other than King Herod. Or other than Roman, I'm sorry, uh, Pontius Pilate. Oh, new doctrine alert. New doctrine alert. New doctrine alert. Some jackass said... Uh, there are some jackasses are saying that uh 
Pontius Pilate was an Israelite. I don't know which camp or group, but if you're saying that, just ridiculous. So, uh, where are we at here? So they're saying if we believe on if we don't do something, the Romans are kind of gonna come and destroy us because we don't. They don't want us to put another king over us. Claiborne Devon says, what about water baptism? Okay, let's put a link in the chat for Claiborne. We'll let him up here, <laughs> even though I'm sick right now. But it's okay. Michael Jordan scored like 55 points with the flu. So we're going to get Claiborne on here. Click the link, brother. You can ask your questions. Click the link. You can ask your questions. All right, so back in John 11, <clears throat> back in John chapter 11, in verse 49, it says, And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year. Somebody in the chat asked a question saying, why did it say that same year as if the, the, the priesthood changed or, you know, the high priest had either transitioned um that year no it's just emphasizing that he's current high priest uh <clears throat> so look what he says he's high priest he told him you know nothing at all right and look what he says because he's in the spirit and he knows the prophecies it says nor consider that it is expedient for us it is expedient for them that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not so christians will try to say well, yeah that's not talking about him dying for salvation of the israelites they're just saying let's kill christ so that the romans won't come kill all the israelites okay well let's keep reading because they did say that in 48 but caiaphas is saying and is saying look at this verse 51 and this he spake not of himself, meaning he was in the spirit of God. Huh? So he's in the spirit and he's telling them this. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Wow. Wow. You can only prophesy if you have the spirit of God. The Messiah. <laughs> Revelation 19.10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he says, See that thou doest not, I am thy fellow servant of thy brother, and I have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Ah. So, going back here, he prophesied in the spirit, prophesied in the spirit, that Jesus should die for that nation. And watch this. Here's what proves that it's not just talking about, let's kill him so the Romans won't get mad and kill everybody. Let's prove that this is talking about him dying to bring salvation to all Israelites. Watch this, verse 52. And not for that nation only, but that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Mm. And look, yeah, how was I knew that they had this counsel? Because look, verse 54, Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews. So he wasn't outside. He wasn't outside. He was inside. Okay, so Claiborne, I see you're in the back, but you have to connect your mic and camera claiborne i see you're in the back but you have to connect your mic and camera so i'm gonna put another link i'm gonna remove you i'm gonna put another link in the chat re-click the link and connect <clears throat> so everybody got that right all praises let's continue until we get our brother claiborne in this thing
That's deep. If we never crucified Jesus, then according to Christianity, they, nobody would have salvation, right? But they try to say, oh, you guys are bad people for crucifying Jesus. You guys killed Jesus. Well, if well, we didn't it, kill him. Honestly, the way I look at it. Americans, we are the real ethnic Israelites. We are the ones who crucified Jesus so that salvation could come to our people. That's deep. If we never crucified Jesus, then according to Christianity, they, nobody would have salvation, right? But they try to say, oh, you guys are bad people for crucifying Jesus. You guys killed Jesus. Well, if well, we didn't it, kill him. A, honestly, the way I look at it, man, it was a blessing in disguise that, a blessing that they disguise. did that because of the simple fact that because Jesus Christ was crucified, now we, as the Bible says, that the wall of partition has been broken down. Now we have an opportunity to approach the Father with boldness, boldness. You, you know, and, and we have the ability to be accepted in, you know. Would, that, you, would you consider yourself a Gentile? Yeah, dude, I, I'm, I'm, I, I know that for a fact because uh, I'm not 100% Jew. You guys have 54 and 3. Let me give you this two. Wait, what just happened here? One second. It skipped. So hold on. <clears throat> Come on, Claiborne, get it right. Let's get a little bit of smoke in here. Let's get a little bit of smoke in here. He's talking about, let's preach Christ crucified. Let's preach Christ crucified. All right. All right, we got you live. What's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Are you new to this channel? Yeah, I'm new. Okay, so what, what, what do you know about the Israelites? So I believe in the water baptism that you that you must be born of the water and the spirit. Okay, so you believe that you must be born of water, literal water. You got to turn off uh, your how, YouTube. How I can't her. Yeah, you got YouTube on. So in your browser, turn off your YouTube, but keep StreamYard open. All right. All right. I, I turned it off. There we go. Okay. So you believe like in a literal water baptism. So if a Christian is in the desert. Yes. If a Christian is, if, if somebody wants to believe in Christ. I'm not worried about the desert. I'm no, hold on. Listen, listen to the scripture. You in destruction. You in destruction. You in destruction mode. You in destruction mode. Let's deal with the Sir. Do you know who's channel? You know you're muted right now, right? You're muted because you got to have some uh, civilization, brother. Don't just cut me off like that. So let me unmute you. All right. So let's get the words of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus Christ say you get saved? Can I reply? Yes. Show me how Jesus Christ said you get saved. You must be born of the water and the spirit yeah show me where jesus christ said that that's how you get okay. salvation oh let's let's start go to john the third chapter mm -hmm. all right so john the third chapter verses three starts with jesus saying Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So my question is, have you been born again? 
of the water and of the spirit. Yeah, so yes, I've been born again of the water and the spirit, and I'll explain. In John 3 that you just read, that's not literal water, for one. For two, how do we know it's not literal water? Because there's different, that's not the baptism of Christ. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, hold on, hold on. Is, hold on. is Christ is Christ's baptism of water or is it a fire? I got a question for you. Was Christ baptized in water and did his the disciples baptize? Both of the answers is yes. So I know, I know, yes, the baptism of fire with the Holy Ghost. I understand that. But the water is essential because you Christ must. Also, Christ also fasted for 40 days. Did you do that? No, I have not fasted for 40 days. Okay. Now, 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 I haven't fasted for 40 days straight, okay. Okay. but I'm quite sure over my lifetime, I if have fasted saying, for 40 days. Okay, but if you're saying we should do everything Christ did, go fast for 40 days and I'll pick your body up afterwards. So in Matthew 3 and 11, in Matthew 3 and 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water. Who's this speaking? What, what chapter are you on? Matthew 3 and 11. So that, that must be John the Baptist. Okay, so John, so whose baptism is by water, John or Christ? Who said it was finished? Who I'm said asking, it was complete? I'm asking a simple question, sir. Whose water, whose baptism is by water, John or Christ? What, all right, I have a question for you. Was it ordained of God? Sir, can you please just answer the question like I answer questions? Whose baptism is by water, according to the scripture, John or Christ? Well, Jesus' disciples baptized in water as well, so both of them. Okay, let's read. Let's keep reading. You're about to be cut. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who is this that's going to come after Jesus? After Jesus? I'm sorry, after John. Jesus, Jesus right? comes after John. Okay. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Where okay. does it where does the scripture say, and he shall baptize you with water? So it, it, it don't say that he it don't it don't say that he won't. What is his baptism according to Matthew 3 and 11? Is it by it water? Or is, it by, is it by water or is it by the Holy Spirit and fire? It doesn't say he won't baptize with water. Oh, okay. So I got a question for you. After Christ preached that in John chapter three, was anybody saved without water? Let's let me let me bring it to you. Let me let me bring you understanding of the Sir, baptism. Okay, I'm gonna let you speak, but I want you to just answer that last question before I give you the floor. After Christ said that in John chapter three, was anybody saved? Did anybody get salvation without water? I don't know. I don't know everyone in the scripture. Okay, so are you saying that after John chapter three, baptism, water baptism became mandatory for salvation? Yes. Okay, now we're in Luke chapter seven. This woman is in the Pharisee's house. She's a sinner. She's washing his hand, washing his feet, giving him her ointments. And look what it says, oiled, it, oiled him. And look what he says to her in uh, verse 50. And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Why did this woman get salvation after John chapter three without water, water uh, baptism? Who said she wasn't baptized? The whole story is right here. There's no account. She didn't go. This is all in the house of the Pharisee. I'll, well, I'll skim well, read it for you. I'll well, skim read it for you. Well, Luke she, chapter seven. Hold on. Let me just read it for the for the crowd. It's not just you in here. In Luke mm -hmm. chapter seven, verse thirty six, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. They didn't have jacuzzis and pools back then in these houses. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and wiped them with her hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, which had 
bidden him solid, he spake with himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus okay. answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will, will love him the most? Simon answered, I suppose he to whom that he forgave the most. And he said, thou hast rightly judged. 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, seest thou this woman? I had entered into thine house. Thou mm. gave me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. If her sins are forgiven, is she saved? If the Lord Jesus Christ says her sins are forgiven, is she saved? Yes, her sins are forgiven. Okay, for she loved much, but to whom little was forgiven, the same loved little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat, they're at the table eating dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is this, uh, this that forgives sins also? And he said unto the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Sir, she did not get water baptism. Who says she didn't? It's not in the text. Well, it's not in, it. it's not in this text. She's at exactly. the table eating. You exactly. Let me it's give you I'm gonna but, give you another. I'm gonna give you another. I'm gonna give you another uh, example. All right. So, so go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts. Okay. Go, go. You you read the book of Acts. I'm gonna give my second example to show you people. Are no, because scripture. I don't know if I'm muted or not. You're not muted, sir. I'm gonna let you read your scripture. Go ahead. Let me find my other scripture. Okay. So if you go to Acts the tenth chapter. <clears throat> Acts the 10th chapter, and I'll start at verse 44. Like I said, I don't know if I'm muted or not. You're not muted, sir. You think I'm a liar? I just told you you're not. Okay. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished. So the Jews were astonished. They of the circumcision. As many as came with Peter... Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. Why, why would he command them to be baptized after they had already received the Holy Ghost? He commanded them to be baptized in water. Okay. Are you ready for me to respond? Yes. Uh, we as Hebrew Israelites do not say that we didn't baptize in water we our stance is is that it's not mandatory for salvation you're a christian like a traditional christian correct yeah right so you guys teach I believe, that i believe jesus is the son of god if that's okay, what you consider you, a traditional christian so you guys believe that the law is done away with right i'm not dealing with that i want to deal with the water i'm going somewhere with this. Water right now I'm going somewhere with this. You guys believe that the law is done away with, right? No, I never said that. Okay, so the law is not done away with. Okay, so you believe I never that. said that. So I don't want to get into things that I'm not ready to speak on. Okay. I'm ready to declare. Are you from, are you from Baltimore? Are you, are you from man Baltimore? must be born of the water. What part, of, what part of Baltimore are you from? I'm from East Baltimore. I grew up on Chilton and Tivoli. Okay. Alameda, okay. Hoff Road. <laughs> okay That's I, knew where I, grew up at. I knew that so again my response to the scripture that you just presented is that for one i asked you to show where your lord and savior said that and you went to acts chapter 10 and oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, sir. i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna let you go 
So but you brought, you, read, brought you brought up Baltimore. You brought up Baltimore. You brought up Baltimore. I'm fine with that. I grew up chilling into Bowie. Hold on. Let me give you my resume. You asked for it. Go ahead, I, brother. I was on South Baltimore, Hamburg, and Litton Hall. I was out Sandtown. I did three years. I mean, what? What? I've been, I, but I, I, I was delivered. And it's not about, I'm not bragging or boasting, but you're the one brought up. I'm from Baltimore. Yes, I am. How do you think I knew that? It don't matter to me. It don't yes. matter to me. Okay. okay. Matter, you you could have seen me preaching one day. It don't nah, matter to me. Nah, I'm not. It don't I'm matter not. to me. You could, I, it, don't, it don't matter to me. Okay. So I want to. No, wanna, no, no. Because, because I, I could have took that. I could have took that as a threat. I could have took that as a threat. Okay, let's and, proceed. And, and, let's proceed. And let's it a, a different type of way. But guess okay. what? Let's I don't proceed. count my life dead to me declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why would you even why would you even throw me out? Okay, all praises. All right, so let's continue here. Let me share my screen. And uh, because you said after John chapter three, nobody got saved without having to be baptized in water. So I'll go to yet another example. Luke chapter 19, verse one. Come on there with me, sir. Why? Why did you? Why did you say I was from Baltimore? Like, what do that matter? It don't matter. I mean, I don't hate you just because what? you're in a white supremacist cult known as Christianity. I'm you have saying, a Baltimore what, accent. Is that, so is, that a, is that a hit out on me or what? Oh my goodness, no! You have a Baltimore accent, sir. I don't have I any don't hits. On me. I don't know. I'm already, like, sir. I'm already killing you right now. Why do I need to kill oh. you again? I'm already killing you right now. Why do I need to kill you again? Let's go to Luke you, chapter 19. I just brought you to Acts, the 10th chapter, and mm -hmm. now you're back in Luke or Matthew somewhere. I, I responded yeah. to Acts chapter 10. Well, so, you must have been muted. You must have been muted yeah, when you said well, it. I told you, I told you we did it as a tradition and as a custom. That's what I said. Tradition so, and custom. Yes, All right. So, so, so I have a question for you. So who made the tradition? And who made the custom? Well, who wasn't we, ordained of God. We have been baptizing since before Jesus Christ. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. So water baptism is not a New Testament concept. So why did they kept why did they keep baptizing in water? And why they're not baptizing in water now? For customary purposes. And if you want to get baptized, you can. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, is it essential? Is it essential? No, now, I've not. heard. I've heard no, that Israelites say you can. I'm no, telling it's you, not, it's not I'm you can. You, Jesus said you, you must. Sir, I'm telling you no, and I'm proving it with the Bible. You don't want me to read the Bible, even though I let you read Acts chapter ten. Read, bro. Read. So in Luke chapter nineteen, let's see if this individual got salvation without water baptism. And Jesus, verse one, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. <clears throat> and uh, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with the man that is a sinner. Same scenario. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restored him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house for so much as he is a son of Abraham for the son of man come uh, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Why is Zacchaeus 
getting salvation without water baptism, sir? Well, Jesus, Jesus, the same, the same power he had to forgive, the same power he has to grant salvation. What's the difference? <clears throat> if you forgive somebody, why can't you grant them salvation? Okay. Well, he, we, he has a son of God. He is a son of God. But okay. let, let's see, let's see him talk to, let's see him talk to anybody else after his death saying okay. they had salvation without being baptized. Okay, that's easy, but I just want you to know you said after John chapter three, it was mandatory. Now you're moving the goalposts and repackaging. Bro, 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 bro. It, so the scripture declares. Let me go to the book. I'm not gay no more. What was that supposed to mean? What was that supposed to mean? I'm going to back off. I'm going to back off because I see you're not ready to even speak on the water baptism. I rest my case. Sir, uh, don't run. The wicked flee. You you can use that scripture. Yeah, but you, wicked, you don't have no wicked? scripture to say baptism is it's finished. Are you so wicked? Why? So so why did you just play that? You not gay no more. What's up with that? Are you wicked? What's up with that? Are you wicked? I got the Holy Ghost. So you're not wicked. I've been baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know I'm asking, are you wicked? I'm baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. Let your yay be yay and your nay nay. Are you wicked? I've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you think I'm wicked? I mean, if you don't keep the, the righteous righteousness comes by keeping the law. See, there so you go. There if you you're go. not keeping the law, then you're wicked. Well, don't don't it say the just shall live by faith? <laughs> yeah, and faith is a part of the law. So so what is the law? Or what, what is sin? It's called the law. The sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Yes. What law? The law of God. What law is that? Which is the law of Moses. So, so you saying people didn't sin before Moses? Yes, but the standard is called progressive. No, no. Listen, so listen. how is so how sin is a transgression of a law if sin let's, existed before the law was given? Well, let's just go to the Bible. After how could after, how let me could explain, how sir, could let sin me be a transgression of the law? Let me if explain. Sin was present before the law. Let me explain. After was the King, old covenant King, was established, was, after the law of Moses was established. The was Cain and sin when he killed his brother? Sir, the way and by which we sin is transgressing against the law of Moses. Here's Paul so, the Apostle. So was Cain in sin? There was no law, but was yes. it sin? Sir, yes, Cain was in sin. You're not letting me but explain. How? But how? And then the scripture declared that this, the devil sinned from the beginning. Okay. So, he sinned from the beginning. So, so when how Paul was says, the law given? When Paul says... In Romans 7 and 7. You, you, the Bible says that the devil sinned from the beginning. Are you going to let me read the Bible, sir? Go to the scriptures, bro. Okay, thank you. you Romans already called me out. Romans you already 7 and 7. called me out. What shall you we say? You already told him I live in Baltimore. Like that really oh even God. matter. <laughs> like that even matter. And then, you, and then you throw in side shots. I'm not gay no more. Like what that matter? What that mean? <laughs> what do that mean to me? Sir, why, are you, why are you so emotional? I'm not emotional, but you're throwing shots at me. Like, okay, we can yeah. meet. If you were in Baltimore, we can meet. Yeah, oh, uh, sir. <laughs> if you were in Baltimore, we can meet. All right. And, and, you... and then you can put your YouTube channel up. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. When I get out there, I'll call you. But listen. Give me your, give me the address. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But listen, we, we have Let's we go. have we have Sakari Baltimore out there. Let's go. Let me, let me mute you for just 30 seconds. I'm going to mute you for 30 seconds so I can read the word of God, please. He said that breaking the law of Moses is not sin. So I just want to read one scripture, Romans 7 and 7. What shall we say then? Is the law of sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. 
for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Sir, sin is the transgression of the law. It's very clear. It's very simple. So let me, uh, because I know we got, um, oh, oh, you left, brother. Come on, man. You didn't have to leave, brother. Is this was him right here? Okay, so there's another person in here. Somebody named Itch Your Boy. What's going on? Yo, Shalom, Shalom family. Hello, hello. Hi, how you doing, sir? What's your question? Hey, nothing much, D. Um, so I, I got two questions. Uh, one, it's, it's mainly focused around um, uh, histor uh, history. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to say, uh, call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Kakadash. All right. And um, that brother who was just on, none of y'all listen to him. He's a man who transgresses the law. So now I have a question about the Talmud. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because after all, Deacon, you are a Talmudic scholar. Yes. Can you bring me that passage? Give me, like Deacon Asaph, give me, give me that um, that passage in the Talmud where it talks about how Yahawashai is boiling in excrement. Sir, you know where it's at. Why do you want me to read it? To, well, it's not just it's not just me and you that's having a conversation. Everybody else is listening. So. For me, just saying that, somebody may not have ever heard of this before. Can we okay. please pull that up in the Talmud? Anybody can look that t verse up. I still have to complete my tape session, so get to your point, Ronan. Whoa, whoa, chill. And who is this Ronan guy? That's not me. I don't know who this guy is. You guys keep calling me him, but that's not me. Have you, but, ever, have you ever came on here by the name Ronan? I have come under many names. Exactly. So ask your question, sir. Okay, so I still want to pull a Bible verse. But, okay, so you are familiar with the passage in the Talmud that says that Yahweh Shai is boiling in excrement? Yes. Okay. Now, when was that written? Uh, during the 3rd or from 300 to 500 A.D. Okay, so 300 to 500. Now... They did they receive that from other sages or from other rabbis that they call rabbis because we understand we have one rabbi, okay, which is Yahweh Shai, but our people who compiled the Talmud, our people did, did they, not compile the Talmud. Oh, it, it wasn't us, no. You see, that's why I'm here to get educated, okay? So, when did we get fully expelled out of the land of Israel? Uh, I mean, some say like uh, 70 AD, um, maybe 69, you know, but yeah, 70 AD. No, 135 AD with the Bar. Oh, because of the Bar, Kob the Bar Koba revolt. Okay, fine. Yeah. So okay. So every source will say that the Talmud that we have today was comprised from about 300 to 500 AD. We were not there, sir. The converts, the Colonymous family, the Herodian family and the converts who we Judaized from the time of Maccabees and on, they're the ones who remained in the land and assumed our identity. <clears throat> so they were, so you're saying that this, but they got this information, the, the information that they compiled in the Talmud, they received that from the traditions of the original Israelites. No, I'm saying that the converts knew our scriptures and extrapolated on them. For example, remember when Paul told King uh, Agrippa, I know you know the law and the prophets. And even when you read the works of Philo, it tells you how uh, some of the Herodians used to come to the temple and read the law with the Levites. So they did know our, and also too, Ankylos. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Ankylos, the first colonist to convert. Of course, God he damn that Edomite. I curse that Edomite. Yeah, but see, he's called the great Bible translator. So they knew our scriptures not to understand the prophecies, but they knew the word, the historicity of it, the timeline, enough to take it, rewrite it, and also add to it 
with these Talmudic traditions. So you are, you're familiar with, so that you had the Jerusalem Talmud, you had the Babylonian Talmud, you're, but these, the, the, I believe the Jerusalem Talmud, and there was one that was written in Persia. No, um, it's all the same. It's all the same. So it, there's not two. The reason why it's called... But the, the dates, the dates Talmud, are different, brother. The dates are different. Sir, I'm trying to educate you. The reason why it's called the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud is because converts from Jerusalem and converts from Babylon came together to compose the Talmud. It's very, you can look it up right now. Okay, well, since you, I would love to see that at some point, if you could prove all things. Yeah, you could, it's, it's, it's anybody can look it up. It's very simple. Let me look it up. No, right. uh, okay, well, I mean, you don't want to prove it right now. I got it. Yeah, so gonna we're, we're right just going to keep moving. I'm going to get it for you right now. So, you know, the term Talmud, named specifically the Babylonian Talmud, and although the Talmud, Mishnah, and Gemara, they call it the Oral Torah. And Jamal, let's get the history. History. Okay, here we go. Babylonian Jerusalem preceded two major two major centers of Jewish scholarship, Galilee and Babylonian. So they came together to write it, brother. It's very simple. But hold on, uh, you you understand that there was one going all the way back to Persia, right? That they had a Talmud in, in uh, during the Persian uh, Empire. Uh, you'd have to show me that. All the way back to four hundred. No, no, not not four hundred, but the traditions. It, it it was written over there in Persia, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, well, you'd have to show me that, sir. But anyway, do you have a question? Because I need to finish this tape session. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll deal with the Jerusalem Talmud. But at the end of the day, the Talmud says that Yahweh Shai is boiling in excrement. Where though, Deacon? Um. In the, it doesn't specifically say though. It just says in the life to come. In the life to come, he's bo he's boiling an excrement in the life to come. No, it says that's what you will get. You will get the same judgment that Yahweh Shai got in the life to come. Okay, and that's why I said just pull it up, just pull it up, read it, and let's see where he's boiling. Sir, oh my God, I know. And you, you if you don't, if you, you better answer truthfully too. Are you telling us? Because I know you. Are you telling us that because we know you believe in hell? You're you're the only Israelite that believes in hell. Are you telling us? No, I don't believe in Greek hell. mythology. Sir, I don't believe in Greek finish, mythology. Let me finish, sir. Are you saying that's a straw that, man? No, no, no. Let's answer the question because you know you gonna look crazy. Are you saying in hell there's a hot pot of shit for people to boil in? I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is, is that the Talmud. Do you agree that with that? Do you agree with that? I, hell no, I don't agree with Yahweh Shai boiling in no, 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 not Yahweh Shai. Just the simple. That is That's possible. what we're talking about, though. We're talking about the Talmud. We're talking about okay. what they're saying. Okay, so do you believe it's possible for somebody to go to hell and be boiling in hot shit? I don't believe in Greek mythology, so I don't <laughs> believe in that. <laughs> We love you. Shalom, brother. <clears throat> okay, so let me let me finish this tape session. For those of you who just joined in, um, Claiborne, Claiborne, <clears throat> Claiborne joined the live stream in the middle of me breaking down this video from CZYN.network promo code Deacon Sakari. So I want to just finish this because it's important. We hoped, we, we started this show hoping because this brother started getting it in the video. We were hoping that Claiborne, excuse me, that Claiborne would get it as well. But Claiborne doesn't get it. He said he did three years in jail only to join a white supremacist cult known as Christianity. And this is why they have our number. The white man has our number. What do I mean? <laughs> he sends us to school to indoctrinate us. He sends us to preschool to indoctrinate it. 
then he sends us to religious organizations to indoctrinate us and then he sends us into prison to indoctrinate us because a lot of niggas turn religious in prison whether it be islam or christianity so this system is really built against us in every way imaginable right oh he said he did three years oh salakia brother i thought you said you did three years i don't know what you mean when you said you did three years did you mean like in seminary school or preaching and pastoring i did remember you saying three years but if i misrepresented you forgive me um <clears throat> either way it's still true though that our people go to jail and get indoctrinated with these white supremacist cults right it's still true oh he said in prison okay bro okay listen man we're praying for you claiborne look you can get baptized in water all you want if you're not an israelite you're not getting salvation period so you probably think you're a hamite God said Hamites are not even going to be able to enter the temple in the kingdom of heaven. You Hamite. <laughs> Show me the way. Show me the way, Hamite. All right, let's continue. That the wall of partition has been broken down. Now we have... Hold on, let me rewind it a little bit more. I don't remember hearing all that. <clears throat> but they try to say oh you guys are bad people for crucifying jesus you guys killed jesus well if well, we didn't it, kill him a, honestly the way i look at it man it was a blessing in disguise that, a blessing that they disguise. did that because of the simple fact that because jesus christ was crucified now we as the bible says that the wall of partition has been broken down now we have an opportunity to approach the father with boldness, boldness. You, you know and and we have why do christians say the middle part the middle wall of partition was broken down as if gentiles didn't come and worship our god they weren't equal citizens they were third class citizens but we've always allowed heathens to come and live in our land and worship our god but they weren't equal to israelites so and they're still not equal to israelites so <clears throat> ability to be sucked in you know would, that, you, would you consider yourself a gentile yeah dude i i'm i'm i i know that for a fact because uh i'm not a hundred percent jew Isaiah 54 and 3. let me give you this two scriptures and let you go go ahead there's a book of first peter chapter 2 verse 9 in uh -huh. the esv uh -huh. but you are a chosen race a chosen race who's he speaking to here well, let me let me know who you're talking about. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. A holy nation, singular. Right. This is singular. Right. So this can't be talking about the multi-ethnic church. This is this is Bible here. So the Christian church is saying the Israelites are no longer God's people, but the the New Testament is saying that you Israelites, you still are a chosen people. Singular, a chosen race, singular, a chosen generation, singular, a chosen nation, singular. Yep. Now let me let me leave you with this. If you are a Gentile, in fact, yep. this is this this verse right here. I wanted to bring out on a couple Christian apologists who believe they're Gentiles. This this is good right here. You ask them if they're a Gentile, and then you read this verse. It's a trap question. Is saying the Israelites are no longer God's people, but the the New Testament is saying that you Israelites, you still are a chosen people, singular, a chosen race, singular, a chosen generation, singular, a chosen nation, singular. Yep. Now let me let me leave you with this: If you are a Gentile, in fact, yep. and the Bible says in the kingdom of heaven, whoever the Jews are, they're going to possess the Gentiles, and the Gentiles will have to serve the ethnic Israelites. Are you ready to serve? Let's say those white people are the true Jews. Are you ready to serve? We already served them already for 400 years, getting our backs beat. Are you ready to serve them again in the kingdom of heaven? I think of, think of it like this, man. Like you got the you got the Jews, and being a Gentiles, uh, we have the same same opportunity to come into the kingdom as as anybody else. 
right? Okay, but this is kingdom right here. Look what right. it says. Go ahead. It's Isaiah chapter 54, verse 3. Yeah. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So it says whoever the Israelites are in the kingdom, they're going to inherit Gentiles. That means that God's going to say, you Gentiles, go serve those Israelites. That's what you're looking forward to? Man, I'm trying to be on the right side, my man. What side is that? With Jesus. With Jesus? Yeah. Okay. You married? Yeah. What's your wife's ethnicity? Native. I mean, yeah, native and white. Yeah. Is, is her father's father native or his, her father is her mother father, native? Father, father. Good, good. That means she's an Israelite. So stay with that woman. And just know this, that we are a special people. They told us we wasn't shit. They told us we were just niggers and our slavery started in history. But we are God's chosen people according to the history, archaeology, and prophecy. Get that man a flyer, pray on it, and let the Most High lead your spirit. Pray on it, and let the Most High lead your spirit. And it's a beautiful thing to actually with a native woman because guess what? You guys can come into this marvelous truth together. That's you understand? As a powerful couple. Shalom and peace, brother. All, right. All praises. Hey, America's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction, man. Right. According to history, archaeology, and prophecy. Uh, <laughs> How do I know that? For real. First of all, <clears throat> Claiborne, nobody said anything about your wife, bro. Why are you just in here, bro? Prison will beat a nigga up, man. Prison will really beat a nigga up. He said, we're talking about his wife. What are you talking about, sir? Like, prison will beat a nigga up. Got a nigga paranoid. Then I played this. I played this clip right here. Bro, you kind of got a guilty conscience. I'm not gay no more. So when I played that, you got all, like, defensive, brother. <clears throat> Oh, somebody talked about his wife in the threads. Don't talk about Claiborne's wife, bro. Don't do that. You talk about my man's wife, I'm blocking you from the channel. I'm a hundred. This that brother's from Baltimore. I'm a thousand percent sure he don't have a white wife. <clears throat> Oh, man, y'all, shoot. I feel so destroyed right now. I need to really try to nap to heal myself. <clears throat> I need to I need to really try to take a nap to heal myself. Pray that this little cold passes quickly for the deacon so I can continue doing the Lord's work. Uh. Yeah, y'all. So that's the type of content that you get on CZYN.network using promo code Deacon Sakari. Because as you can see, some stuff has to be edited, cut short, or just not put on YouTube at all. Somebody said, Philip baptized an Ethiopian eunuch. Okay, that's fine. Nobody's saying don't get baptized. We're saying your Lord and Savior said the way you get to the kingdom of heaven is Matthew 19 by keeping the commandments. What commandments was he talking about? The law of Moses. So follow the face of, uh, follow, um, the Messiah, the Lord in Christ. Ezekiel 45 is in the kingdom, brother Daniel Israel. But what you have to understand a sin offering is not always about committing a sin. You got to read that Torah, son. <clears throat> All right, Brother Claiborne, repent, come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments, and know you're an Israelite, God's chosen people. I know out in Baltimore, they treat you guys like pieces of trash and garbage. They have never gave you guys any racial empowerment and ethnic pride. And Brother Claiborne, guess what? Brother Claiborne, there are thousands and thousands of real niggas in Baltimore that have repented and now are Hebrew Israelites 
have came back to their law, statutes, and commandments, their heritage and culture. Don't know young niggas who run, the youth run the generation. I know you know that. The youth run the generation, Brother Claiborne. The youth run the generation. And don't know youth want to hear that plantation Christianity from that white supremacist cult in the current climate of the world. These youth want the get back, which is why they're setting shit on fire and rioting everywhere. They want that get back. That's why they're playing the knockout game with white people. So I'm here to tell you, I want you to evangelize and mentor those youth in Baltimore, but they don't want to hear that KKK Christianity, sir. Come on. All right, let's pray for Brother Claiborne. I think he might get it because he's still here. So all praises. Keep watching and praying and may the Lord lead you in the right way, Brother Claiborne. Let's end this by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. And we do so by Shema Mashiach Shai. Till next time, y'all. I think it's what? Friday Night Flux? I'll see y'all at the Friday Night Flux, Lord's will, and Shalom.